up if they are able to take them down. And with Yumi taken off the table, Maokai banned out, uh, Caitlyn does seem like an obvious answer. Do you think Kopp is, is one willing to go to a Draven? Is he comfortable to play that? Well, so that was actually the one champion he didn't play mm. in uh, Summer. Often he was more of the Callista Lucian end and yeah. he just left the Draven through. Uh, so I'm curious as to what direction they go because we know that this bot lane will look to try and go all in, but it's it's tough to say what direction they'll take. They could. They could do a Jinx Lulu answer. Yeah. If they want to try and oh. match range for range. Oh. What about Ezreal? This 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 feels like FF the lane and start roaming, right? Like yeah. If if you're gonna go Ezreal, I'm expecting it to be roamers. The other option is you can go something like Ezreal Karma. If you want to play heavily for the lane, that is your other option. So they're actually going for this. So I take it back. Uh, when I first saw the Ezreal coming <laughs> through, I was I was thinking it was just gonna be Trimby playing like Recon or whatever and roam the map and just say, all right, we're gonna get stuff done elsewhere. Okay. But this is playing for the two v two. When you go Karma, you likely are gonna go Karma. It, you're gonna go scorch, you're gonna go heavy for that poke here, and then it's really just down to execution. How much of that poke can you land? Because Ezreal Karma can be unstoppable, can be so oppressive, or it can be useless. It's yeah. really down how many skill shots you're gonna hit. So we talked about it earlier, when I think of comp, there are certain champions that do resonate with him, and Ezreal is actually one of his comfort. It's one of his most played throughout his entire career in the LEC. So Rogue have tried to go a little bit more towards comfort while also giving themselves a powerful two versus two. A lot of range on this bot side of the map. Often the ants, and again, Remember how earlier I was saying that in Europe, the way they answer Caitlyn Soraka is by cross mapping. Instead, they invest in the top side and they'll go for these more range matchups. Whereas in the East, they'll hit you with the all in, attack your level one, attack your level two, and you're already seeing that slight contrast here. Yeah, so bot lane's match, mid lane's match here. Zeka goes for the blind Silas. And we see on the other side, they're not willing to actually wait for, for another round to actually allow this to be protected by ban. So Larson just snaps down that LeBlanc. Engage is going to become very high priority here. You know, I do think it's really important to be able to get to that back line, to be able to have lockdown when you're playing against LeBlanc, when you're playing against that Ezreal. But likewise, when you're going in against something long range like the Caitlyn and the Lux. So something even like Vi, I do think really starts to skyrocket in priority. I'm going to be interested to see if Malring's just going to go to tried and true like a J4 or if he'd be willing to pivot here a little bit. Well, they are already targeting some of the remaining Engage at the top of the tier lists here. The Sejuani, not quite on the same level of big team fight ulti yeah. engaged there, just single target compared to like an Orn or a Maokai that have already been banned, but she's still a big meatball, she's still scary, she has a lot of lockdown, she's banned away. Renekton taken off the table by DRX. So what is the second ban gonna be for Rogue? Is it more of that engage? Is it more of these champions that are gonna fill that niche that neither side has locked in a lot of yet? Again, more focus going towards Oduwame. Interesting that they would be the team to ban away the Ken because uh, this is actually Dark. one of his go-to champions. Like, Orn, Maokai, Renekton are kind of the three champions synonymous with Oduwame alongside the Nar. I don't know if they were just oh. blind Nar, though. I feel like that right now it makes the most sense to lock in their jungle pick. There's no sh there's no shot at Rumble. They would be way too AP heavy. I think this is an absolute grief if they lock, if they lock Rumble. It has to be Nar. Nar as, soon as, Nar as soon as I saw the Kennen ban, though, I think it's because Odo isn't that comfortable when you go when you push him this far in the champion pool. To me, it feels like they start seeing all of this pinch up towards top lane. All of the tanks are banned out. Uh, Renekton's banned out. Aatrox is banned out. Everything is being taken off the table. So to me, the Kennen ban tip the hat that is going to be Nar, but that does show a little bit of a champion pool issue here that you feel like you can't actually fifth pick. You have to fifth pick your jungle, so you're giving counter pick over to Kingen. I was just about to say, I think Camille is going to come out with yeah. DRX, and then he instantly locks it in. It's something that he's very comfortable That's on as well, turn. and it's a winning matchup, but what makes Camille very good is the amount of mobility on the side of Rogue. Israel, how do you lock him down? Camille Bye. ultimate. LeBlanc, how do you lock him down? Camille ultimate. You pair that up with a Vi as well. You have so much single target lockdown to make it easier for the Caitlyn, the Lux, the Silas to be able to commit onto these very mobile champions. Absolutely. I mean, I said it. Vi was going to really rise in priority here, and that's why I was thinking, you know, the better draft would have been Rogue take Vi on four and counter pick on five. Right. But I think they're really concerned that the champion pool is getting too pinched. They wanted to have comfort for Odo, so they have to blind. And when you're on red side and you're blinding your your, your top laner there on four five, that really does put you at a disadvantage. But we'll see if they can play their way out of this hole, because I do think they've, they've drafted themselves into a little bit of a hole here. We'll see if their superior play can really make the difference. The big, uh, I mean, I would say the main bright side for Rogue is this LeBlanc Lee Sin mid-jungle that mm -hmm. they do have. 
while Rogue is not typically known for their mid-jungle synergy, and we're going to have to be seeing it today, because when you draft a mid-jungle like this, it's all about heavy mid-ganks, using that pressure to roam towards sides, and looking to try and get advantages elsewhere on the map. But the one thing you cannot deny about DRX is they have demonstrated at this tournament that their individual laners are very talented. Definitely I mean, advancing the semifinals or not, potentially, based on the tougher opponent. You know how important it is, and sometimes people will turtle up and play passive. Other people will step up, get aggressive, and be the difference maker for their team. And it's great that you mentioned that, Azel, because back in 2016, we were in North America, and it was Edward Gaming versus H2K. It was a tiebreaker to determine who would get first in that group. And back then, it was Odo Omne top lane, and it was deft on AD carry for EDG. And it was Odo Omne that was able to get the edge over his counterpart. What happened? H2K got first seed, they got Albus Knox Luna in the quarterfinals, they won 3-0 and made it to semis. Like, that first seed can make such a massive they difference can. in terms of your qualification, and that can really shift the perception about you as a player, Minions you as an organization, and your region, if just qualifying for semis compared to a quarterfinals. Well, and I'd just say, and ending the group stage here on a win would do a lot to build confidence in Rogue for, for, for European fans, for sure. right? Because let's be honest, you know, this has been a very rough week. It is, is one in eight right now for Europe in week two. If you end this on a loss, with your only win being that over GAM, People are going to have a lot of doubts about how they're going to be able to perform in that quarterfinal, especially given that they would have a very tough first seed from another group. But if you get this win, if you show that you can bounce back after what has been a tough day for Rogue so far, you really restore that faith. You get an easier matchup, and then who knows? The sky's the limit. All righty. Well, everybody is into their lane. The minions have collided. Junglers are starting off on their respective blue buffs. We expect them to be pathing in opposite directions here early on. Something worth noting is the comp is playing TP. So uh, this is going to mean that we're going to see, I think, Rogue really trying to play heavily for push. If they can get push and nonstop shove in, then you can get really great base timings with the TP. The downside here is you're not playing cleanse, you're not playing heal. So if you do actually get hit by a binding or if you do get ganked in you're these dead. kind of combat situations, yeah, you're very likely just going to get locked down, trapped up afterwards. So it is kind of a little bit of risk versus reward here. But if Rogue can land their poke, can maintain an aggressive position here, that TP is so valuable for the resets. And you saw a little bit there of what Caitlyn and Lux like to do. Hit him with the binding, follow up with a guaranteed damage of the built over Peacemaker. Zek is at about 200 HP here in the mid lane. Larson controlling this matchup here for now. Oh, Zekka jumps in, but Malrang is immediately there. His counter attack forces the flash from the DRX mid. What's interesting is that I don't think that was planned by Malrang. He was just pathing from his bot side counters to his top side ones, and then he said, well, hang on a second. This guy looks like he's about to get level three. Let's just hover here just in case, and they're able to get the flash out from Zekka. As we also see, ooh, a pretty even trade as King and will take that top lane tower shot. But overall, DRX off to a pretty good start in the early game. Yeah, and I think Zekka's read. Oh, the trap. That's the Wombo combo. Trimby walking away. He will not die to the Ignite. It's not strong enough to finish off 100 HP at this level. Yeah, but he only has that one potion running, and that is going to be really tough for him to actually stay around here. Uh, Pioshek also heading down towards bot, you know, is on the crux right now. I don't know that he'll look for any sort of a dive. They may just want to take a reset off of this, yeah. uh, as Trimby has healed up quite a lot. But yeah, I, th I think that Zekka's read was that Malrang starting bot, he would be up towards the red buff and stuff, so he was, he was safe to kind of move forward and get aggressive there. Um, but of course, Malrang just was around in mid and is able to punish. No smite on either jungler, but they don't necessarily know that the other one doesn't have it. So it's going to be a fight here. One level advantage for Pioshik, though. That's huge. The Vault Breaker just punching the snot out of him. Malrang has to try to get away with that safeguard over the wall. He'll survive, but it's control over the bot side river, control over the scuttle crab for Pioshik. Securing those Krugs made the world of difference in that 1v1 matchup. The level 4 to level 3 really was the decider as DRX Botling continue to apply pressure. But pre credit to Comp, he will stay even in farm for now. They have we'll their eyes on around. King in here. King in. That's big. Okay, he is used. In. Yeah, he already used his hook shot. Oduamne still trying to get away. Kingen, I don't think there's a whole lot of ways out of this one unless you pull off something wild. Not happening. First blood of the road. And that's a big blunder there from Kingen. His wave is in an awkward spot, and he is trying to push it underneath the tower, but he committed all of his skills to trading onto Odoamle. And the second that he did that, themselves the first kill, uh, and it's only a smaller advantage back. for Rome. Let's go. We're back in the game.
Yeah, and I agree with you. You know, it is a tough situation as a top laner, but at the end of the day, in those situations, you often just have to take the L, give up a few minions, DP right, yeah. back, call up your jungler, help him to get you that reset. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, goes for the, the riskier play here, does get punished, and as a result, it is a slight lead for Rogue. Bot lane has been very even overall. You know, we saw Trimby get very, very low, but had the potions still uh, in, the, in the inventory to really be able to heal it back up. Yep not making himself too easy of a target down there for the bindings. You saw Barrel fling out one of those. The danger is getting hit with the binding, the follow-up with the Caitlyn trap, every subsequent skill shot having to hit you then because of how powerful that CC chain is. But Trimby and Comp will just continue farming these up. Comp is very low on mana right now as Pioshik sweeps his way through this bottom side river, potentially looking from an angle here, going into the enemy jungle. Now Rang will clear out the Wolves. He has level four. Pioshik is level spotted. five. Ballbreaker charging up. Pioshik just turns it right back around in a Malrang, who lands his Sonic Wave, but will not take the Q. His mind's telling him no, and his body's telling him no. <laughs> yeah, Zekka cheating down toward that bottom side as well. Would have been a really risky move to go. You can see Odo, much better buy as a result, has the Hearthbound Axe. Uh, got the boots as well, so more expensive item has the boots on top. Uh, compared to really just the sheen on the other side. I uh, like the early recall there from Deft. You don't want to get trapped too heavily in these lanes against TP bot laners. You need to take the early recalls when that opportunity presents itself. Uh, because if you stick around too long and you get pushed in and they're able to actually co go back to base, TP back, they can sometimes keep you really locked under your tower. Uh, so a good timing on the reset from Deft. Not really going to lose much of anything. And Bioshock again hanging around on this bottom side. They have spotted Malrang as well as Trimby. And remember, both these junglers are level five, soon to be six, and for Vi especially, it makes it so easy to just point and click, go in, make these plays happen. Panning back up in the top side here, you can see Kingen trying to fight back against Odwamne, but the power of the range continuing to be the advantage for the Gnar, like what you talked about, Isaac. And it's kind of that move speed diff, right? Because a lot of where Gnar actually wins the trades is on the back end of the trade. Camille hookshots forward, you know, gets the Q3, has the passive up, and then it's really, oh, nice slow binding. Uh, not quite enough to get the kill. The net didn't connect, so you don't get the extra headshot there at the end. And Barrel didn't use the Ignite. If Barrel actually got the Ignite down on comp, you have to think he's back to base at the very least, uh, but does hold on to it. And now Maorang again down here covering the lanes. Just a little bit of trading here in the mid lane as well. As you can see, Larson, half HP, but he's all right. Has his lost chapter. The buy from Zekka wasn't quite good enough to be able to get himself a lost chapter earlier as well. But down here in bottom lane, it's Trimby and Comp still just stuck underneath this turret. This is the reality of so many matchups into Caitlyn and Lux. This is where Caitlyn and Lux want to be a very different look compared to the game where we saw this go up against the Draven and the Blitzcrank that just demolished it. And oh. Okay, what do you got? Look at this. Okay, so they pinged out the ward. He knows the ward's in the side brush. So Pioshik is wrapping around it. They tracked where Odoamne dropped the ward. They're going to look for the all-in on the mini -nar. Here we go. Odoamne, where no. are we going? No, okay. we're not. Here we go, right back into the Can river. I walk in the lane, yeah. look at him. Odoamne's like, hello. <laughs> <Go trick says. laughs> Goodbye. Hello. And then uh, both will part ways. I think one of the scariest things is that they don't have full information as to where Malrang is right mm -hmm. now. You can see pings right now coming down onto the raptors because they believe that he might be there. Larson needs to go back to base. This is a very big window for T-Rex to try and force something, but Odoamne gets a good trade at top. So now he's going to clear out this wave and Rogue is going to say, we're probably strong enough to contest this Herald, and I feel like that they know that it's going on. Now Rang has information, he's going to come over the wall, here we go. Larson's not here though, and Kingen has TP, so this would be a very risky contest. Still at 2,000 HP, Eyeball gets proc there. DRX playing this yep. very, very patiently. One more Eyeball proc, there it is, punch it, pick up the eye, DRX, get it, get out. And I gotta give credit to Odo, because he never had vision on the Vive, who was looking for that wraparound gank, but he's playing far enough back in the lane, he had the read that he could be in danger there. Yeah. You know, kind of inferred that it could be happening, and uh, just based on the fact that, as you said, they don't know where Malrang is, Betty, and he's pretty far back to the tower, so he could still hop and flash towards that tower, even if you go for that ulti on Vive, if you get pulled into the turret, you're gonna be in trouble. My eyes as well on what the junglers are up to. Is uh, Kyoshik is now pathing towards the bot side of the map. And with a reset coming in from Comp and Trimby, oh. this could be a window for Pyoshik to actually path towards the bot Dragon, which obviously you can see Rogue now understand that there's a window where they can move into the top side jungle. So pings are coming down. They're trying to figure out if the top side blue buff is up secured. And maybe they can threaten 
a dive. Odo Omni has just gone into Mega Nars, so that window likely going to be unavailable as he can't stack that up on the next wave, which is largely when they look to set up that play. And even though Malrang is here, it's more of just a defensive option, making sure Odo Omni can get this wave crashed in safely. Kingen jumps in after him there, finds some decent damage. Kingen flashing back out before Malrang is able to find a good kick angle, but he flashes in and gets it anyway. Kingen just keeps going in when Malrang is lying in wait, and that's going to be another kill over to Rogue. Meanwhile, bottom side, the Herald is dropped with only two plates remaining. So first, Turret goes over to DRX. Yeah, that's big. Trying to get Defty he ahead here, trying to accelerate him, and they want to walk this in. They want to get that second charge here. That is why Pioshek is actually posturing so aggressively. We'll see if they can actually do it. Not going to be able to, it looks like, because it's getting very low. Yep, there it went. Popped. But this is exactly how you want to be playing Caitlyn lanes. Basically, you push, 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 get Herald, secure a tower, and then you move your Caitlyn everywhere. They can now swap their Caitlyn to mid, they can move their Caitlyn to top, and you just leverage her strong siege and basically inability to shut her down uh, to secure as many early game advantages as possible. This is often why many teams uh, like the LPL and the LCK would draft like Leona, they would draft Bloodscrank, because the only way that you can stop this range matchup is to be able to engage and shut it down. Yeah, and this is just, again, great, great timing here from, from Maorang. He's in the right place, right time. He looks for the kick flash, you know, catches up. The slowdown from the boomerang there. Able to give another kill over to Odo. Or excuse me, an assist there. Has the one kill prior, but did pick up plates. And he's already on his Triforce. Look at Kingen. He's so far away from the Mythic. So um, Maorang really has been the difference maker in this one. And talking about Mythics, when that turret was taken bottom, it was Def hitting off. the money. Kingen's in trouble. They just pop him. They drop him. It's Odawam. They grab the kill. But now, what else is going to happen? The oh! They strike right back. They get two. We'll see if they continue now. Larson going to be pushed back here. DRX was in position to go for this. Nice sidestep from Larson, though. Will oh, get it. Or will it? Both got binded. Nicely done, but the follow-up isn't there from anybody else, so Larson gets away. It was a nice explosion on the King to start it off, but DRX was ready to hit right back. Really, it was a mid-diff. Like, Larson went over the wall and then left, where Zeka went over the wall and committed. He was full-on committed to this team fight, and he is the reason why DRX walk away with two kills. Now DRX find themselves with the gold lead, even though Rogue leading kills. And this will buy a little bit of time here, you know, for King to go down towards bot, try to collect some farm. Uh, we'll see if he can kind of farm himself back into this game, but great poke there onto Deft. Uh, we'll land the ulti back on the comp, but uh, Deft is going to be set back to base here. He's getting very, very low and uh, can't really afford to continue staying around. Yeah, they're going to try to interrupt his back if they can. You can see both Comp and Trimby stepping up, but they can't go any closer to the turret. Death made sure we got back far enough. Malrang hanging around to see if maybe there's a blue buff to be taken away. Q timing is just a little bit slow there. Barrel underneath the turret by himself huh. immediately Rogue, clears the wave. Rogue wants to move up, but I don't know how well that's going to work. Trimby is burning, 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 burned. Larson's ready to follow it back up. Zeka. So it's a one for one trade. Zaka finds Larson here in the river, but it's pretty easy for LeBlanc to be able to get away. Malrang safeguarding right back over the wall and kicking Zeka back where he came from. Malrang plays that well, and it ends up being a one for one overall. I think securing that kill into the jungler, though, they're quite happy to give up Trimby in that exchange with Zeka once more. Oh, he's gonna find it! No! Not quite! And Comp barely gets away. Oh my god, I can't believe Comp reacted to that. He was definitely not browsing the shop. He was hyper-focused, and the reaction speed needed to get away with his life there. Good play from Zeka, but a better one from Comp. Yeah, it is the trade of flashes at the end of the day, but that delayed base. The problem here is that DRX has way more tempo. They're getting a lot done. You, know, you look at the map. Top lane has to be answered by LeBlanc, so what happens mid? Up goes the Silas. He pushes that in, so you're losing plates on both sides. They knew that with this late recall that then got stopped from comp, Deft would take so many plates if you didn't go up to answer, so Larson covers, but it means they're going to fall behind across the map. Oh, man, Deft going in there, trying to use the ace in the hole plus Gale Force execution combo to maybe get a cheeky kill onto Larson, but it will not work. Meanwhile, back in mid, Pioshik said, hey, man, I heard you don't have a flash, and Zekka oh. gets a killing spree. That was actually beautiful. Zekka taxiing to the creeps with his E, landing the Everfrost through the creeps onto Comp there, locking him down, and again, not playing with that cleanse, not playing with that heal. Now, the TP very useful, but in some of these situations, 
positions, uh, it does feel like you know, he's maybe hurting for not having that combat summoner. A very clean early game overall. DRX, the way they've moved around the map, the advantages that they've been able to secure, the setting up for this Drake, a bit of a late first Drake overall, but let's have a look back at this play. Ah, uh -oh. Comp just uses E to get back into lane. And it's just, it's that easy. Yeah. You highlighted it. He used the E onto the minion to help close the gap. Locked him down with the Everfrost. The chain CC was perfect. But this is something that Rogue is going to have to deal with later on. We talked about the single target lockdown that exists for DRX. And it's only going to get more and more dangerous as the game progresses. And, and that's one of those things where it's honestly just a mental error, right? Like, you're using that E to get, what, one minion, right? You know, get to lane faster even. Like yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it's just one of those situations where it's just not going to be worth it, right? But it, but it is something that's very easy to do, where you just want to use your gap closer, you get back in. Uh, but DRX punish immediately off that one thing. If he just walked up, he would have the E to get back to the tower. It would be no problem. It's pretty much the opposite of what you were talking about with the reaction time topside where he used the flash to escape the death of the Silas. There, he's completely focused. He's completely aware of the state of things around him. Here in mid lane, that laps for a second ends up costing him with the E being down. And DRX have a three-man push here in mid, trying to take down this tier one turret, grab themselves a second turret for the game. Looks like Rogue's not gonna have a lot to say about it as the minions can do enough damage to take it out. You can see four Rogue players around the area, two in the lane, two off to the side there in the jungle. You have to think that if the turret didn't go down quite as fast, they might have tried to make some sort of a play there, but it just doesn't happen. And now it's DRX controlling the river with a second Rift Herald spawn. Absolutely. Still something working well, though, for Rogue, as Odo is quite a bit ahead, you know, does have the Tier 2 boots, uh, has a Kill Gem on top of what his opponent has. They are matched now in Mythics, but Odo going to be feeling good in that 1v1, and if they can get him some vision, he can threaten this Tier 1 tower. I think that Rogue is aware that they are up on this Herald, so we'll see if Odo can get some pressure down on that bottom side uh, and look to really kind of exploit that advantage that him and Malmarang were able to build. Oh boy, Oduamne getting stuck in the Hextech ultimatum. Zek is showing up with a stolen LeBlanc ultimate. Odo throwing out the Meganar, looking to take one oh. with him, but he goes alone, and Zekka gets his fourth kill of the game. That one hurts for Odo, so close to being able to get that kill in the 1v2, but the lane ward that was dropped, making all the difference is Zekka on that TP flank, and now tier two mid has been cracked. The Herald's gonna get a charge on the tier three. Larson's not even here. They can continue the siege. Yep, yeah, Maorang's at the chickens. Larson's in top lane. Odawamne's six feet beneath the ground. That tier three turret took a beating there as DRX build their lead up to almost 3,000. Kingen now sent back into the top side to deal with that. And boys, it took 17 minutes, but we will finally see the first Drake of the game go down. It's DRX looking to take. It's hard not to feel like it's just a mid-diff right now. When you compare the amount that Zekka has been roaming around the map compared to what we've been seeing from Larson, it always feels like the Larson is second to the play. He's not been able to find any real opportunities. He's currently sitting in the fog of war looking for a pick, but immediately he's going to disengage because he realizes the collapse is very real. Between two soul laners right Bye, now. Man. Oh boy, Larson. Getting away for now, but Kingen goes over the wall to follow him. Oduamne's waiting to back up his mid laner, but DRX has backup too. With both sides not having full information, everybody just goes home. Yeah, and especially once that Gnar ultimate is stolen, you've got to be so careful about that Silas stealing the Gnar ult. It does incredible amounts of damage. And I mean, 17 minutes in, we're now at 18, but 17 minutes into the game, Zach had completed his second item, right? He's on two items, has eight stacks on that. We'll see if he wants to upgrade to a book, but the Dark Seal giving him a lot of extra power, and we've seen how good Zekka is on these melee AP carries. Has been a monster and has all of his playmaking kit ready to go with the Zonies and Everfrost. Just love what we've been seeing from Kyoshik as well as he continues to attack these side lanes, constantly looking for picks. Larson, though, with the double chains. This is killable here. Kingen, flash, hook shot away. Larson cannot quite chase it down. Kingen is getting focused and beat up this game. That's sort of a bit of a silver lining here for Rogue, going up against what DRX has built. Oduamne dead for 25 seconds, and the top lane tier one falls. DRX continue pushing forward. And something a little bit interesting here, Larson actually going for, for the Leandry's build, right? You know, this is a bit of more CDR with the Mythic passive. It is a bit higher DPS in these extended fights, uh, but he's not going for a flat pen build against a team that is very, very squishy. So I must say I'm pretty surprised that he didn't go Ludens, Shadow Flame, you know, Spell Pen Trifecta, but now he's going to be looking for Daft. Daft getting away, though, using Plays. the Gale Force, the extra power of the active to get out of the range of the chain so he doesn't get locked down. So we're starting to see Larson be a little bit more active on the map, mm -hmm. which is definitely what we need to see. 
And now we see this gank up towards the top side of the map. And just this repeated attack on the side lanes is just, it's so clean for DRX. Pioshik, he has his ultimate and he knows that if he works with Kingen or he works with Zekka, it's very easy for them to get kills. And this is what we talked about, this single target lockdown. I was more worried about it later on into the fights, but Rogue don't get to leverage their mobility. And once again, they find themselves in a position where they're just losing the game. Earlier on when they played against DRX, they watched the map fall apart around them, and now the same thing is happening where Pioshik is just getting the better of Maorang, and DRX are just taking objective after objective. DRX looking for that tier two here in bottom. Larson and Tremby, they don't really have a whole lot to say about it, so there's more money in the pocket of DRX. 5,000 gold ahead. They've got the one Drake taken in the game so far. Everfrost towards Maorang there, but he's able to safeguard over the wall and stay away from that Silas with that devastating Gnar ulti that you were talking about, Isaac. And DRX are just playing a beautiful game here. You know, snowballing this game so well. Pressure through bot with the Caitlyn Lux. The only kind of hiccup has been top lane. Pioshik in trouble now. Pioshik may have been caught, oh. but instead, it's the absolute artillery cannon of Deft and Barrel that turns it around and takes Malrang off the map. Another kill going the way there. The first one now for Deft, getting further and further ahead. Zekka playing an incredible game. Pioshik going into this tank mythic. He knows his job is more the setup, more the support. Zekka on the bush here up top, but Rogue just don't have the confidence to try to look for the pick. Rogue just feels so weak right now. Like, after that bot tower fell, you're sitting there and you're looking at this Rogue comp and you're like, what are you waiting for exactly? Right? Because there, there's there's just so much missing, it feels like, on the side of Rogue. They don't have a reliable way to start off fights. They have poke on the side of LeBlanc and Ezreal, but in order to do that, you need to be set up around an objective and you don't have yeah. any control. You don't have any push in top lane, you don't have any push in bot. And once again, we're just seeing Rogue fall short in the early game without any real answers or ways to come back in the mid game. Yeah, it is tough, right? And they're clearly focusing all of their vision up towards top, right up in this top side jungle. They have a lot of wards down there. DRX trying to move in to start to contest, uh, but there is no vision for them down around the dragons. One thing at least working for a Rogue is the fact that because it was such a late first dragon take, it's not like they're staring down the barrel of an early soul or anything like that. They have time. You can try to get towards Death Gap. You can try to get towards level 16 on LeBlanc and really get that poke online. Comp has also hit his big two item spike. Caitlyn though pushing towards IE, which is very, very scary. And we'll see if DRX can find a pick here. What a while they on the front, soaking up the bullets. Death firing them off. Gale Force in, net Ooh. back out. Headshot goes through. Ace in the whole block is by gone, Comp, but Odawamne now can't fight. That's your frontliner, that's your team fighter, that's your engage, and he's got to go back and heal. So DRX off of some aggressive shooting there from Deft. They're going to get their TP first play. inhibitor. Rogue's going to try to find it here. Odo almost has Meganar. They're going. They're ready to look for it, but Malrang's the one who's been found. DRX shut that down. It's just clean from DRX. They don't even go for the 5v5. They're constantly looking for picks, and Rogue is giving it to them. DRX are so good at finding these windows of opportunity, and they found it. Oh, there's the Mega Nar ulti coming out from Zekka as Larson stuck in the Hextech ultimatum, and P.O. shit kills him next. Oduamne tries to get back with the flashback over the wall, but DRX get four more bodies. DRX are running away with it. They are crushing through Rogue here. The kills are theirs. The Baron will be theirs as well. 23 minutes in, the DRX are crushing this game. It's nothing but a stomp from the side of DRX. From start to finish, they have not given Rogue a single window and it feels like that they have found the formula to shut this team down. A Baron is secured. A 9,000 gold lead is the difference between TRX and Rogue. Zekka just laying in wait as soon as they come over the wall there. In he goes, Megan R ult, Barrel's ulti over the top, and they just pile in kill after kill after kill here. They had already taken down Malrang to preempt the TP play. Rogue, at the very least, will steal away a dragon, and this should be a bounty, so they do get a bit of gold, but it is more than 8,000 in the lead. Now pick. 
Larson, nice, oh. nice, nice. They pop the AD carry. They slow the war machine, but now Larson's got to be careful. It's Seca waiting TV. to go after him, trying to get the E2, not going to find it. Kingan goes in, and a nice kick to take him down. But now trimby has got to try to get away. Second D2 from Zeka, not going to find the target. Kingan still doing some DPS here to the front line. Zeka goes in, and that time he gets his man. Pioshik still in hot pursuit, and Kingan has the vengeance to exact. Rogue are ace. The game is over. The tie is broken. And DRX win the group. Zeka goes off 9-0-3 on the Silas. And DRX makes short work of Rogue. Not even 25 minutes into the game, the Nexus will fall. And they claim their rightful first place in this group. A team that was consistently underrated. Expectations were incredibly low, yet continuously, this DRX roster continues to show growth. Finishing first seed in their group. That is three LCK teams have qualified from their group. With only Gen G left to go, LCK is looking to reaffirm their dominance on the world stage. And you've got to give Gen G pretty good odds to get out of their group. I don't think uh, they're too worried about it, but DRX is deserving of so much credit. Uh, this team definitely overlooked, this team underrated for sure coming into Worlds uh, by many, myself included. They really have stepped up. They've played such a cohesive game here uh, that I think no one really doubted some of the individual skill on this team, yeah. but they doubted that they could bring it all together. They could make it look so cohesive on the world stage, but this is stock standard League of Legends. This is perfectly snowballing a game start to finish. Yes, their Camille died a few times, but besides that, what's there to criticize? That was never really a loss condition, though, was having the Camille be dead over and over and over again. Not when Zekka is able to do what he does on this Silas. Not when they're finding these advantages like they were in the bottom lane with the Caitlyn and the Lux Barrel setting it up. So dead